Hello students, and I hope you're having a wonderful start to your week. Here is today's bell work. You're going to go to your unit module, unit resources, and find the practice cell diagram in order to practice for your exam. Because these structures will be on your exam, you need to know how to label the cell diagram. So you're going to, one, practice for five minutes, two, list the structures you're struggling with, and three, List how you're going to plan to improve your cell labeling for the exam. So when you go to Canvas, you can go to your unit module right here and click on Practice Cell Diagram where you will find this embedded where you can practice for your upcoming exam. Um, the day for your exam has not been announced yet, so please don't worry if you're struggling with this. So here it says, oops. Let's go back. Practice cell diagram is right here. And it will say, click on the endoplasmic reticulum, and then you can practice from there. You can get it wrong, or you can get it right. Click on lysosome, OK. So you click on lysosome. Okay, now to move on with our lecture, the mitochondria is the cell's energy center. It's going to help generate ATP um, through the process of the Krebs cycle, and it is called the powerhouse of the cell. The cytoplasm is the jelly-like substance that is going to help suspend the intracellular organelles. Um, it supports Oops, I was talking about cytoplasm. Let's talk about the cytoskeleton. The cytoskeleton is going to be the external structure of the cell, and it helps have the cell shape and helps have a function and movement. You have microtubules and microfilaments. Microtubules are a bit thin, thicker than microfilaments, which are a little bit thinner, and these can help um, with basically cell division, but they are part of the cell's cytoskeleton. Centrioles are only found in animal cells, and they are also used in cell division. When you are pulling the chromosomes apart, they attach to centrioles, so that is where um, they have the function in cell division. Cilia and flagella are not on all cells, but cells that do have them, um, they can help with locomotion or movement. And cilia are hair-like structures used in movement. They are found in, for example, animals such as humans in our esophagus to help move food down through our esophagus and into our stomach. And flagella are long hair-like structures used in movement, such as the sperm cells found in males, part of their reproductive cells. Vacuoles are storage areas and especially um, prominent in plant cells. Um, plant cells usually have larger central vacuoles compared to animal cells, which have smaller vacuoles, and this is where cells can store certain things throughout. Cells are like factories, and the product that cells make is proteins. DNA has instructions, or the blueprint, of how to build these proteins. These instructions are sent to ribosomes, the ribosomes build the proteins. The proteins go to the ER for packaging. Or the protein goes through the ER, and then the Golgi body packages and exports them. Here is a picture of the cell. We need to be able to recognize the parts of the cell in order to study best for our exam. Here is a blank picture that you can use to practice, or you can use the Bellworks practice in order to practice. And here's a image of cheek cells that have been swabbed and then stained in order to view them on a microscope. Here's a, a link to coloring that you can color and practice labeling for your exam. Now we're going to talk a little bit about plant cells. So plant cells have a cell wall which functions to support. Remember, plants are hard and structured where they don't have the organs that we do as humans to be able to support their structure. Instead, they have cell walls that allow them to 
have structural support. They also have chloroplasts, unlike humans, which are going to function in photosynthesis, which is how plant cells create their own nutrients. And they also have a central vacuole, which is important for plant survival, that's going to store the water in plants. Plants require a lot of water and have a central storage place such as a vacuole, which as humans have intracellular fluid and extracellular fluid, so they don't need a central vacuole um, as big as plant cells because we have water stored in other places. And here's a diagram that you can practice for the labeling of plant cells to prepare for your exam. And here are some pictures of the cells found in L LODS cells, which is a plant, a water plant found, or I should say a plant found in water. And here are slides of their cells. So here's a picture where you can compare plant and animal cells next to each other. You can see that plant cells have a cell wall, whereas animal cells do not have a cell wall. Um, you can see the large central vacuole within a plant cell is much larger than the small vacuoles found in our animal cells. Both of them have um, mitochondria, nuclei, um, a nucleolus, is found in actually both as well, but it's not pictured here in the animal cell. Um, we have the ER, the endoplasmic reticulum, both in plants and animal cells, just shaped a little bit differently in these two pictures. And we have a Golgi complex or Golgi apparatus or Golgi body, whatever you want to call it. They are found in both, as well as lysosomes, cytoplasm, and the cell membrane, whereas animal cells lack a chloroplast and plant cells have a chloroplast, that's where you get that green color in plants. Now we have eukaryotic next to prokaryotic cells. Eukaryotic is you, so these are cells found in animals, and prokaryotic cells are like probiotics. Prokaryotic means that it is from a bacteria, and it is mostly single-celled organisms that have prokaryotic cell types or very small celled organisms that have prokaryotic cell types. And you can see that instead of a nucleolus and a nucleus, prokaryotic cells have a nucleoid. They also have a peptidoglycic um, capsule, which is going to help um, protect them. Not all prokaryotic cells have flagellum, but those that do, it's going to aid them in locomotion. Prokaryotic cells also have a cell wall, which is not seen in eukaryotic cells. Instead, eukaryotic cells have a cell membrane only, whereas prokaryotic cells have both a cell membrane and a cell wall. And both of these cell types have ribosomes. So those are their commonalities, and you can see that there are a few differences as well. Okay, so we're now talking about our animal cells here, which is our eukaryotic cells. Um, and we want to show you here that um, this represents the endosymbiotic theory, which states that eukaryotic cells evolved when prokaryotic cells engulfed and absorbed other cells. So their, sim their symbiotic relationship is that the plasma membrane was enfolded to form the nucleus, and therefore different organelles went ahead and began to form through the engulfment of aerobic and cyano cyanobacteria, um, and then it created our ancestral eukaryotic cell, which we share common ancestors with um, these types of cells. All right, we're going to move on to the next section starting tomorrow, which we will speak about DNA and protein synthesis and cell division. So please be prepared to move on to a new PowerPoint tomorrow. Stay tuned for your exit ticket shortly to come. And here's your exit ticket. Go ahead and pause your screen so that you can get these questions to complete in your weekly bell and exit ticket so that you can earn daily participation points for the class. As always, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Be kind to one another and make great choices. I'll see you guys later.